I mean, you may say, oh, we could have done a little better here. It's people's lives. If, think, they're, if they're out there to do good, this doesn't do it, does it? I think the obligation to do no harm and to be accountable and to be transparent applies as much as to WikiLeaks as it does to governments. But how I can agree. it apply to a bunch of internet cowboys who put out whatever they feel like it? I think we're just beginning to have this debate. I think this kind of openness is going to be with us from now on. There will be more and more WikiLeaks. There will be more and more disclosures of this kind. It could well go and the I other think, way, couldn't let it? Me finish. Could well I go the we, other way. I think we need to develop a moral code and a set of norms and understandings about how these things should be conducted. So WikiLeaks in its current form you don't like? It's not the be-all and end-all? I think it's imperfect, but it is an, a response to the fact that people have been lied to by their governments for the last 10 years in particular. And it is, a, it is a crude response to that, but a necessary one. And let me put the same question to you I put to, to Sir Richard Dalton. How would you get ever a source, a confidential source, to trust you with information if it could be given out to WikiLeaks and broadcast around the world? They, they simply won't do it. Well, in all candor, and I've written 80,000 words in a book about this very subject, I don't think diplomacy is a very honest business. And it should be more honest and less duplicitous, and it should be more transparent. All right. Karen Ross, thank you very much. Thank you. Could I please ask Scott uh, Gilmore to speak against Absolutely. the motion? I have to say I was concerned about debating Sir Richard, but now I'm terrified about debating you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but, I, but I can still confidently say that the world is not a better place because of WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks gained fame by revealing horrible collateral damage in Iraq, but ironically it's now creating that same collateral damage of its own, hurting innocent people. The recent cable gate dump harms not only U.S. diplomats, but also the thousands of human rights activists and opposition leaders who talk to diplomats. I can say from my own experience that those brave people that are willing to share information with foreign uh, diplomats can put their lives at risk and do die, and people will die because of the, the, the cable uh, releases. But don't take my word for it. Amnesty International called for WikiLeaks to not publish the cables, concerned that it would needlessly harm innocent activists. How did Julian Assange respond to this? He told them to go stuff themselves. Now, WikiLeaks is also going to erode accountability. In the United States and around the world, the law is made by the people and those the people elect. Democratic institutions such as courts and parliaments maintain checks and balances and decide what should or should not be kept secret. WikiLeaks has now taken it on themselves to play this role, to decide what the public can and cannot see. The power to decide what is justifiably secret used to belong to you, the citizens of democratic governments. Assange has taken that from you. Now, note I say democratic governments because WikiLeaks is not revealing the secrets of totalitarian states. Ironically, Assange is seeking to harm those nations which are already the most open and the most transparent. WikiLeaks began as a, whistleblowing, a, a whistleblower of terrible wrongs, but now is merely vandalizing diplomacy. The documentary dumps are making it more difficult for ambassadors to do their jobs, to talk confidentially with foreign people and governments, and as a result, the world is less diplomatic and less open. This is because WikiLe WikiLeaks is a symptom, it is not a cure. It is a symptom of the understandable frustration felt around the world by people who are rightly demanding more openness from their governments. But arbitrarily revealing secrets in this unaccountable fashion on this industrial scale is not the cure. It makes the situation worse by forcing governments to record less, share less, and hide better. So let me close with the words of Private Bradley Manning, who gave the US diplomatic cables to WikiLeaks. He said his leak would, and, and I quote, bring worldwide anarchy. It's beautiful and horrifying. Those are not the words of a transparency activist who's seeking to make the world a better place. Could you come to a close? Those are the words of an arsonist. Please oppose this motion. Scott Gilmore, thank you very much indeed. What kind of arsonist is it in the shape of Julian Assange who approaches the US State Department, specifically the US Embassy in London, and offers to um, share the information and get suggestions from them about who might be endangered by this information? They turned him down flat. Well, he's an inconsistent arsonist because he has made that offer and he's retracted well, it was a good offer. offer. They, they, the they offer turned him down flat. Pulled it away. They turned him down flat. So who's the responsibility yeah. for damaging life? Where does that lie? With them or well, with I, Julian Assange? He tried. He knocked on the door. They he, turned him away. He tried, and did they turn him away, or was it a negotiating tactic suggesting to him, that, assuming that he had some sort of moral guidance or moral point there, where he recognized that people would be hurt and they were demanding that he would do the right thing? All they said to him in their letter, November 27, 2010, despite your stated desire to protect those lives, you have done the opposite and endangered the lives of countless individuals. They turned him down flat. Instead of taking part in the process... The State Department also doesn't ter uh, negotiate with terrorists, and in a way, this is a form of terrorism. This is terrorism? This is, this is, this is old-school anarchy. This is Julian Assange 
saying uh, How would we out, have out, terrorism to, to, to give us information about what's been going on in Iraq? You said, you said an interesting thing. You said that information used to lie with the people. Did it? How much information were the people given on Iraq? The, the they were lied to consistently about the presence and, of And do you know what? Before WikiLeaks came out, before WikiLeaks came out, we found out they lied. And in fact, in, in the United Kingdom today, or yesterday, Prime Minister uh, Blair was held accountable for that. He was stood before a court, basically, of the people to be held accountable. To be held accountable, he barely answered the questions. We had, we had the unenviable spectacle of, of the committee that was inquiring into Iraq, unable to get access to two letters between President Bush but and Tony remains, Blair, though, which they quoted from extensively in their memoirs. Everyone at this table and everyone in this Isn't room that knew that those lies took place before WikiLeaks did so much damage to the international diplomatic system. We knew that, and those people were being held accountable. We knew it from leaks. Yeah, from we knew it from leaks. We knew it from whistleblowers. If, if this is people, not, if people this don't is not leak, whistleblowing. This if is, WikiLeaks this is doesn't vandalism. leak, what other opportunities have we got? We have a history of governments, people have over the last 10, 15, 20 to years, lying to their people. Absolutely. But of the 250,000 cables it. that are being... You admit it. I admit that whistleblowers have a moral obligation to stand up to that sort of thing. And Karn did the right thing when he you did sure that. sure you're on the right side but of he, this debate? But he did not let Maybe you should cross a quarter over. million cables go. <laughs> All right, Scott Gilmore, thank you very much indeed. The motion before the House, this House believes the world is better off with WikiLeaks. We're going to take your question. Gentleman up there in the blue shirt. Thank you. I have a question from Mr. Ross. Say that the world is, you are supporting the motion and you're saying that the world is better off. But at the same time, you're saying that WikiLeaks should have done a better job in filtering or not saying the whole truth because the truth could might harm some people. I give an example, an, ex an example of Afghanistan because I'm from Afghanistan. WikiLeaks only released the information to just show the relation between Ahmed Karzai and his former vice president, but showed not, no, no proof that his brother, Ahmed, I mean, Wali, Wali Karzai, he's being corrupted and he's being stealing the money as well. Don't you think that showing half of the truth actually is harming more people than not, having, not knowing the truth at all? I think it's a very good question. I think we need the whole truth and that we need to examine that. One of the problems with WikiLeaks is, is if, of course, it's only a partial account. But the cables from Afghanistan are nevertheless very devastating because they show the Karzai government brazenly refusing to address corruption at the request current, of the US what, government. What are we not seeing? What is Julian Assange not allowing us point. to see? No, I agree. It's a, this we, is the we fundamental problem. It's not a yeah. problem. It's the fundamental problem. So you say problem. there should be full transparency. We should see all the cables. No, I'm saying that we should take, in the, in the case of the democratic states like the United States, those democratic and accountable institutions that we already have in place, those checks and balances, and Scott, use them. it doesn't work. It didn't work in the case of Iraq. I've testified to Congress and I've testified to Parliament, and their questions are not good enough. They don't hold that's, government listen, to account. That's just pure rubbish. Okay, the, why? The fact is why? That that's, your, why? that's your opinion. It's well, not my I opinion, was, it's my I experience. was involved in this process, and I know that the mistakes were made because people didn't make the right decisions, not because they were trying to lie to people. You can be wrong. The fact is that weapons of mass destruction was simply a mistake by the intelligence community, no, that's and that they no. were only repeating what the intelligence community said. That's a fact. So you may wag your finger at me, but I worked on this subject for four and a half years. I read the intelligence every single day, and the case for war was exaggerated. But, the, but the, the, that's not the point. That's not the point. What is the point then? The point and that, is, that truth was not revealed. It was not found out by parliaments before the but war. Whose fault that's why was we that? need these whose cables fault was out. That? It was the intelligence community in the United mm -hmm. States' fault. And where is the accountability for them? Well, they did not do a good job, and they should be blamed for that. The fact it's is, it's a that, little late for that, isn't it? Well, it's kind of late for you to say all of this stuff. I was there. And I, I don't resigned remember you speaking up. I resigned. I spoke up. I spoke up. I resigned up about too, it. fellow. So, <laughs> this is not something that you can be, you know, the, the, the soul of the world. The fact is that there were mistakes made in Iraq. There were things that were done that I think were horrible, the torture, much of the other things that went on. But to argue that the United States government is, can't be trusted I'm and has lied to its American I argued about my own government. Well, you listen carefully? I, I have more respect for the British government apparently than you do. Uh, the fact is that this is one of those cases where every government in the world has to honor privacy. If they don't, people won't talk to them. Privacy, That's fact. Privacy over truth? I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's not a matter of truth. If someone tells you something to pass on to the President of the United States and says, but please don't tell anybody, 
That was not the case in WMD. It's, you not, it's not that simple in WMD. There was vast amounts of intelligence data which said very clearly over and over the same thing that there was no threat from That's Iraq. That's not true. That That's intelligence true. was then massaged you, to claim a threat. I read that intelligence, sir. I was part I, of the I, assessments. I, went I, wrote to, the, I, wrote I went the intelligence. I went to UK US meetings on Iraq every quarter for four and a half years. And we began every one of those meetings by saying the same thing. Containment is working. Iraq is not well, a threat. But, but, but the, if, you, if you're right, this doesn't mean that WikiLeaks is going to make the world better. We have a democratic system in place, and as Winston Churchill, your Winston Churchill said, it's a horrible system, but it's the best system we got. The choice that we're being offered here tonight is between choosing a form of anarchy or at least trying to work within the system that's, helped, that's worked pretty well so far and is working in the UK. Okay, we could, we could argue very passionately here at the table for a long time, but I think we want to bring the audience in. <laughs> Gentlemen in the second row there, you've got a question. Good afternoon. Uh, we the people are the citizens, are the ones who choose our leaders in our countries during voting. If we don't know the, re the, the truth behind our leaders and their plans in the future, then what's the point? Democracy is a mess. It's a messy house. It's a, it's a house with leaky roofs and all sorts of problems and floors that are falling down. It doesn't leak. have to be full of lies though, does it? Well, some houses are. Mm -hmm. but what we're offered here is a choice. Julian Assange and, and Private Manning and others, they want to blow this house up. They, they genuinely I want to bring down the diplomatic that. system. And what we're proposing on this side of the table is that it's a bad system, but we can make it better. We can rebuild that house. We can use democracy to challenge, like is happening in London right now, the mistakes. Rather than destroy it. He says himself that that's his purpose. He's not trying to have more open and transparency. He's hoping that we tighten up. He hopes that people can't communicate between governments. That's exactly what he wrote. That's what he, his objectives are. And if you agree with those, fine. So but, Richard, but that's I a different you issue. You're quoting very selectively from what he said, which is why I quoted his very careful words that transparent government tends to produce just government. And I'm sure you would agree with that. But the point is that we have a difficulty facing US diplomats at the moment. We do not have anything like the kind of anarchy or vandalism of the diplomatic system that you are alleging. Why? Because it will be in the interests of all those informants and all those foreign governments to continue to deal with the United States. Okay, I'm going to move on. Gentleman in the second row, please. I'm Mahmoud, and I was just going to ask for Mr. Carl and Scott. You were saying that WikiLeaks is a terrorist act. It's not terrorism. Terrorism is for killing innocent people, and it's not a terrorist act to give information out, information that shouldn't be hidden from the public. Carl Ford? I understand completely people's concerns about not being told the truth by their governments. Uh, that's something that all of us object to, and that we should hold our governments to a very high standard. And that's why we elect officials that's why we set up elaborate procedures to oversee what the executive branch and what the president is doing. Uh, does it, is it fail safe? No. Uh, but the intention is to make sure that the information that the people of the United States need to know to make good decisions, they know. If there are things that they w would undermine their national security, we sometimes say it's better that we keep it secret. The American people, by the way, agree with that. They know that if there are some things that could secret, hurt us. If you're trying to keep it secret, you know, like people outside in the U.S. and Canada and Australia, they don't really know what's happening in Palestine. They don't know how, you know, they, don't, they only know one side of the story. They don't know the next. They don't know, you know, the killing of innocent people, you know. You, well, they I, only I, know certainly one not side true of the story. The you know, this is what... This is what Leaky Leak is trying to do. They're well, just trying to give the other side of the story, which the governments hide. Well, I, I think that the people in the United States hear that story loud and clear from its, not only its government I officials, disagree. but from its, its press and media. The fact is that they may not tell it exactly like you want it to. They may not be as sharp or as accurate as you hope they would be. But the fact is that I'll put the United States and its openness and its transparency up against any country in the world. Scott Gilmore, you wanted to add something? Well, I, you know, I said WikiLeaks is a form of terrorism, and that sounds absurd, doesn't it? It sounds over the top, but think about it. This is a group of people who are trying to change the way that governments 
uh, act and behave, and they're doing it through a set of illegal actions. They're trying to scare people into changing their behavior. And innocent people what are going to be hurt and died by this. they performed? 